This video is for you if you're time constrained. Perhaps you have an interview coming up very soon and you don't think you have enough time. Maybe you have a full-time job. Maybe you have family commitments. Maybe you have other hobbies you want to pursue. Or maybe it's a combination of these or you just want to get through your um, lead code grinding or your DSA study and algorithmic problem solving um, very quickly. Perhaps you want to get through like 200 problems, 300 problems, whatever it is you want to do. This video is for you because it's all about how you can save time. I'll show you how you can do it two to four times faster. Um, I'm not exaggerating. Uh, this table here I'm going to discuss in greater detail later in the video, but I actually have to set up some context because what it's basically describing is your baseline scenario when you're self-studying in, in what I'm calling the interview training phase. I'm going to explain what that means, but I just put it reasonable time for someone who's trying to nail these um, big tech interviews for crafting the algorithm, implementing, doing dry runs, fixing bugs. And what this will look like in the optimized scenarios I'm going to uh, explain. The optimized scenarios are just the scenario where you apply the optimization techniques. I'm going to share two techniques, essentially. It's, it's the same one, but split it into two. It has like two parts. So you, long story short, you can get roughly two times um, factor and improvement or roughly a four times, or let's call it 3.6 if you want. So I'm going to explain this shortly, but I do need to set some context. So please bear with the context, very important and very valuable as well. So I'm going to quickly dive into this phased learning approach that is really important. And I made the previous video on this a while ago, but essentially you have a goal, which is, for example, to learn data structures, algorithms, or maybe you're preparing, preparing for a specific company like Meta, and you want to go through like 200 of their previously asked questions or something like that, but you have a, a goal, right? So with DSA, by the way, this applies to other domains, but we're talking about data structures and algorithms. The phase approach is there's the foundation phase, which is self-explanatory. It's really just foundational knowledge on the key concepts, you know, arrays, graphs. You just focus on having that understanding. This isn't about solving problems. This isn't about passing interviews. It's just understanding the theory, right? The next phase is an interview-oriented learning phase. So the foundation is more like, you know, going through the textbook, the videos, learning the concepts. Um, now in the interview-oriented learning phase, this is about um, optimizing your learning so you can pass interviews. So you're actually using realistic interview problems to learn. And this will reveal gaps in your knowledge because when you go through foundation phase, there's still going to be connections between ideas, patterns you're going to miss. And the this interview-oriented learning phase will reveal them. So this is just really you having a learning mindset, taking interview-style problems, obviously from a, you move from easy to to medium to hard you know you progressively move up in difficulty and you can do a topic by topic basis so um you you can pick like stack related questions and solve them start from the easier ones and move up and any gap you identify you you know plot that gap and learn from it you can even look at some of these problems you get stuck just look at the solution and learn from it go you can always go back to some of the foundational material you use as well to refresh your memory right so so far this is the found um learning phase the technique I'm going to discuss, you wouldn't use this here because the idea is I'm saying take your time to actually build that strong foundation. Technique applies from here onwards, so an interview-oriented training or practice phase. It's similar to the interview-oriented learning phase in the sense that you're using interview problems, but the difference is, there's a few differences. So one is you're no longer using a learning mindset, you're actually using a problem-solving mindset. Your objective is to try and solve these problems the way you would in an interview under the time constraint. Because it's still self-study, you're not perfectly simulating an interview where you are actually engaging with the real interviewer and you know the pressure is there and all of the differences and conditions. But here at least you can pick problems, put a time constraint and try and solve it how you would in an interview and, and, and see. And it, because you've already gone through this learning and foundational phase, you should have built a lot of knowledge, a lot of connections between ideas, seen a lot of patterns. Really here, what you should really be Improving is your speed. You still obviously learn because you encounter things you haven't seen before and tricks. But in the key thing in this phase is when you pick problems, you don't necessarily pick them on a topic by topic basis. Like you don't know the topic, you just pick, you know, topics and problems are random. Otherwise, if you know the topic, uh, that's not really simulating like um, that. You're already getting a clue of what what you need to use, right? So 
that's the third phase. And the final phase is a mock interview phase. And that's just to get you practicing on the realistic conditions or as close to realistic as possible with the human that you have to engage with. You know, you're going to feel the pressure there. Uh, you're going to have to communicate and context switch between communicating and problem solving. You know, you might feel the pressure, which for some people leads to a brain freeze. So you can see if you can handle that. And all the other um, things that occur in interviews, for example, an interviewer might disrupt your train of thought. Can you handle that? Can you push back? Uh, sometimes some interviewers rush you and so on. Uh, you can get to a uh, pair program in some types of interview styles, uh, which is hard to simulate on your own in self-study. So mock interviews are really kind of the gold standard for realistic practice so you can actually prove your readiness so the more you do you can get more data and if you're like passing like you know if you're getting a strong high or high in eight nine out of ten mocks and even in the ones the tenth one that didn't go so well if it's like a lean high or it's just a really ridiculously hard problem then that's a good sign that you're ready one last thing on the phase approach you don't have to do mock interviews at the very end it doesn't have to be this sequential phase i'll actually recommend you start doing mocks early on so maybe whilst you're in the you're past the foundational phase and maybe maybe halfway is through the interview oriented learning phase um, you can do some diagnostic mocks and the focus is not so much on what knowledge you have or don't have although that's valuable but also on your interviewing skills how you handle pressure how you communicate you're basically getting a taste of um, what your gaps are skills wise and knowledge wise, especially on the skill side. So you can start working on them. You basically, you don't have to wait till you've done all this till you start like getting good at actual interviewing skills. Right. And then you can even do coach mock interviews. So when you're in the interview oriented training or practice phase where you're doing some self studying and problems, your own in parallel, you can also be having coached mock sessions. Or even pair mocks with your friend. So on the code Shingen platform, this is why our logo is here, you can actually have these. So as you're doing your sort of self-study, you can also have um, mocks intertwined to a diagnostic mock, coach mocks. And then once you're done with all your self-study, then you can just blast off for mock interviews and then do your real interviews. So that's the phase approach. So just to stress, the technique I'm going to share is more applicable when you're in the interview-oriented training practice phase. This is typically where people are uh, grinding you know, 100, 200 problems, 300 for some people, um, you know, uh, to cover all, let's just say cover all angles, right? Increase the chances of um, being able to handle the problems they, they see, especially in the companies that repeat questions or have variant and have tight time constraints. So I spoke about diagnostic mocks, coached mocks and regular mock interviews. If you check out the conditioning website, you can easily um, schedule these with an experienced engineer, conditioning.com. You choose your target company and you provide all sorts of details and help you. So now, now to the technique. So I'm going to simplify by giving you an analogy. Uh, consider you're trying to go from point A to B, right? I can give you directions. And even with those directions, it could be like, you know, go straight, start from here, go straight, turn left here, go straight down, turn right here. So you can have directions. If I'm going to simplify directions, it could be like start here, straight left, second right, you know, and so on. So very concise and give it to you in one minute. You can memorize it. You can learn it. You can even do a sort of Google Street view and kind of simulate walking through, right? The other alternative is actually go through the actual journey and actually um, do the walk. Actually go on the journey from point A to B. Maybe it takes 13 minutes, like in this picture, or it takes like a minute or so to sort of learn the directions. There's a huge difference in how long it takes to sort of just learn the directions versus actually go on the journey. Like, so 13 minutes versus a minute, that's like a 13 times difference, right? So the trick, if we can call it that, or the tip I'm going to share today is going to show the same kind of order of magnitude um, improvement uh, using this similar idea behind directions and actually going through the journey. The crux of the optimization comes from leveraging a mental canvas you have in your brain versus having to type things out, right? So to give an example, if you look at this piece of code on the right, it's some implementation of binary search in Python. That's not too important. The key thing is we have a bunch of lines of code. Uh, you notice there's some comments. For example, there's get the middle value, found the target, and so on. So the technique I'm advocating for is you have some problem, you think about the solution. Again, this is the interview oriented phase where your foundation is already good and you've already gone through quite a lot of these algorithm problems and learned a lot of them. So you're quite, at least at an intermediate level, right? So you can you can think through algorithms comfortably, basically. You're not a beginner. Um, 
So what you could do is you could lay out your skeleton code, well, skeleton solution using comments. Well, let's call it skeleton code using just comment, no code, don't type any line of code, right? Don't type any syntax. And for every region where you've typed a comment, you can just mentally visualize exactly what your you will type, but you mentally do it. So, and the idea is the, the thinking about a certain line of code and just laying it out mentally is 30 to 50 times faster uh, than actually typing it out. Typing is a slow step. So if you go back to the analogy we gave between directions and journey, typing is like walking from point A to B, going through the whole, let's say 13 minutes, right? And mentally thinking about it is just about sort of getting the directions. That's kind of the comparison I was given. The technique I've shared will help you improve your implementation speed by a factor of 30 to 50 because you're doing things mentally. Here I give a breakdown of analysis of comparing someone at average typing speed 40, 40 words per minute compared to if they do a mental visualization. Um, and you see where the 30 to 50 times sort of range come from. Now, this is a pure mental strategy, and that obviously gives a lot of the time savings. But one thing I want to stress is this is something you're doing in the interview-oriented phase. This is where you have a lot of experience from learning. and from, um, from You have a strong foundation. You've done a lot of problems in a learning kind of mindset. You've absorbed a lot of insights, connections, patterns, ideas. So by the time you get here, it's very easy for you to spot you know, how to what the optimal solution is. You're doing that very quickly and so on. And also, because you've done so much practice, you're also not introducing bugs as often it's probably very rare that you have bugs and the reason i say that is because of this analysis i'm going to show you later one more thing um you might find that okay if i do everything mentally what if i have one question you might have is what if i have doubts what i say is even doubt you can verify but that doesn't mean you still need to type you can use ai auto complete if you have visual studio code and the github copilot extension you can leverage the auto complete there i'll demo this for you um, there's other tools like Replit. I suspect Cursor will also have this, but I haven't tested it out myself. But once you have AI to complete, where you can type a comment and then let the AI generate the code, what you can do there is type a comment of your intent, mentally visualize exactly the code you write, but let the AI do the typing. So let's look at this analysis. So for someone who's quite advanced in the interview prep, that's the original scenario here, the first row, the baseline. If you're solving this typical interview problem, so let's say medium difficulty, this is something you should be doing in, let's just say an average 25 minutes. Um, maybe they're spending five minutes or less crafting the algorithm, 15 minutes or less doing implementation, five minutes or less doing their dry run. Now with the pure mental solving approach where you literally do no typing, and you use your mental canvas to kind of visualize what code you've typed, the key optimization comes where you're going from like 15 minutes in implementation to two. You're just laying out your skeleton and mentally visualizing. And the reason why you can do this at this stage this fast, because again, you're so advanced. This is why I kept stressing that you're in the interview training phase. If you're quite, if you're a beginner, you can't do this, right? And overall, this gives you like a 3.6, let's just call it four times um, improvement in speed. You round it up. The second scenario is where you actually use that autocomplete to sort of verify. So spend a bit more time. You're really just pressing tab, depending on the tool, to get the AI to code. So that takes just a few more minutes. So let's say it's an extra three minutes relative to this. So that's roughly two times factor in improvement. So this is where the two to four times comes from. And that means two weeks of work. If, if we're talking about two times, two weeks of work now takes one week. Or a month worth of work is two weeks. That's quite significant. Four times, a whole month, four weeks of work, roughly, is now in a week that is quite significant so if you were doing like a four month what would probably have taken four months of studying and practice and so on at least from the interview training phase onwards could now take a month so this is quite significant very powerful definitely consider trying it out so we are going to do a demo shortly but i just wanted to say if you do like the video so far hit like you know share subscribe uh if you have thoughts leave a comment um so I'm going to do a demo, but one more thing. Now, it's nice that you can go faster. That's great. But there's no point in putting all the work and time in learning all these things if you're going to forget them. So there's this very powerful video on how to grind lead code without forgetting everything. I'm going to put the link in the description. And I'm also going to put it at one of the videos that comes up in the recommendation at the end. So you can check it out. Um, it's using a variation of space repetition with tools 
that can help you make sure that you know, you're know you going to spend three months or whatever time period studying, you're not going to forget everything. And it, it helps you get things to long-term memory, which is useful because once you've gone through this grind once, the next time you have to do it, if you ever have to do it, you can easily recall things because you actually store them in, in your brain, in like persistent store in your brain, right? So definitely check it out. So here I have VS Code. I'm just going to make it even bigger. So I pretty much have a function here to get the largest value in a list of integers, so an array of integers, right? And it returns an optional integer. This means it returns the integer value if one exists or it returns none. So null, none, depending on what programming language you use, um, if there's no such value. And I've already laid out my skeleton. So this is something you can do. Um, so I've said, okay, some validation handling, like if the list is empty, just return none. And otherwise, what I'm going to do is, since I know I have at least one value in the list, I'm going to set the maximum value seen so far to the first value. And then I'm going to go through the list, uh, go through each value in the list, and I'll compare each to the maximum value seen so far. If a new value I encounter exceeds the max value seen so far, then I'll update the, ma I'll update the max value seen so far, right? So that by the time I'm at the end and I've gone through all values in the list, the max value seen so far at the very end is the max value seen after going through all the values. So it's the maximum value, right? So I've laid out the skeleton. And what you can then do is line by line, um, you think of exactly what logic you're going to write mentally. So here, mentally, I'm visualizing that I'm doing an if not values, or if you're in another programming language, you know, you can say if values dot length is equal to zero, or values is null or whatever your programming language is, I'm going to return null, I'm going to return none. So because I'm using Python, I'm just going to stick to a Python example. But here I'm going to let AI do it. So mentally, I've done that in like under a second or a second if you want. But to type it, it will take me maybe 5, 10, 15 seconds. Who knows? Uh, maybe 50 seconds. So the AI says, if not values return none. I didn't have to type that. Initializes, right? It goes through each value. And if the value I'm seeing now is greater than the max value seen so far, I do an update of the max value and I simply return the result. Now, this is a very simple example, right? Uh, but that's where the time savings come from, especially if the algorithm is a bit more involved. Again, the reason for doing this is if you had doubt and you just wanted to prove that your logic works and runs against test cases. So uh, another value from this is all the typing as well, uh, imports rather, you can get the AI to do it. Again, you mentally visualize exactly what you do, but let the AI do the heavy lifting, right? Let the AI do the, the typing. So now you can take this and run it against test cases if you want, right? If you're using leak code, you can run it against the test cases. If you're using conditioning, you can also run this, right? Um, so that's really the demo. It's very straightforward. Let the AI do the typing and you get 30 to 50 times time savings. Very powerful. So if you like the video so far, definitely hit like, hit subscribe. And if you have any ideas on techniques you, one can use to optimize uh, how they get through these problems, definitely do share them in the comments. Just one last thing, uh, what you see now is the homepage of codition.com. Actually, it's a screenshot. So you can go to the website yourself and check it out. But if you have interviews coming up and you need to do mock interviews, whether it's like a proper full-on mock with an engineer from uh, your target company, or at least a Fang plus engineer who's quite experienced, uh, we can also do coached interviews, you can do diagnostic mock interviews. And we also have um, offline content you can check out, diagnostic tests, we have learning content, we have blog posts and advice and more features I'll leave you to explore. Uh, so it's codishing.com, definitely check it out. Especially our Codishing 360, which is um, our service where it's basically end-to-end -end guidance throughout your interview loop from when you start with your online assessments to the phone screen, to the on-site, to in your, all your interactions with the recruiter to your offer negotiation and we offer offline support help you with your roadmap we um, answer any questions you may have we guide you on whether you should reschedule or not and we give you an objective measure of how ready you are so that you don't waste your opportunity so definitely check out Kodishing 360 and all our other features see you in the next video